This week we will be discussing the phenomenon of sparks and how they work. Also, we will be doing some experiments with them as this is what you chose in the poll two weeks ago. Fireworks, sparklers and the sparks they produce have amazed people for centuries. Fireworks are explosive devices used for entertainment, creating colorful displays of light and sounds in the sky. They come in many forms, from aerial shells that burst into patterns to ground-based fountains and firecrackers. Welcome to Cube Chemistry, where we will discuss all the elements of the periodic system and also do experiments. Now, if you like this video and want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Also, if you want to influence the element we will be discussing next week, make sure to fill in the poll. Humans have been fascinated by fireworks for over a millennium. The first fireworks were invented in ancient China, around the 7th century, during the Tang or Song dynasty. According to historical accounts, Chinese alchemists discovered that mixing common ingredients like saltpeter, potassium nitrate, charcoal and sulfur created a crude form of gunpowder. When this mixture was packed into bamboo tubes and thrown into the fire, it would explode with a loud bang and a bright flash, frightening evil spirits and delighting onlookers. Early on, people also tossed hollow bamboo stalks in the fire. The air inside would heat and burst the bamboo with a loud pop, an effect that likely inspired the first gunpowder firecrackers. Over time, the Chinese developed firecrackers, paper tubes filled with gunpowder and fuses, and even primitive sparklers. Historical records suggest that dipping bamboo sticks into gunpowder slurry produced a steady crackle of sparks without the full explosion. Firework technology spread along trade routes to the Middle East and Europe. By the 14th century, fireworks were being made in Europe, and they became especially popular by the 17th century for celebrations and public displays. Italian artisans in the Renaissance period became famous for elaborate firework shows. Now, these displays were sometimes set on floating platforms on water to enhance reflections as well as safety measure. In 1749, a grand fireworks display in London was accompanied by Handel's music for the Royal Fireworks. However, the colors and effects of early fireworks were limited. They mostly produced golden or orange flames from burning black powder and metal filings. It wasn't until the 19th century that fireworks became a vivid spectacle we know today. Chemists began incorporating new elements. In 1786, potassium chloride was found to yield violet flames and by the 1830s, Italian firework makers introduced strontium salts for brilliant reds and barium salts for greens. The isolation of metals like magnesium and aluminum, which burn with intense white light, also make fireworks brighter. These advances turned fireworks from simple sparks into dazzling multicolor displays. So, Let's dive into a little bit on how it works. Fireworks and sparklers rely on oxidation reactions. Controlled combustion that produces heat, light and sound. Each firework needs four basic types of ingredients to function. Now the first thing that you need is fuel. This is what burns to release energy. In fireworks, fuels include charcoal and sulfur. While in sparklers, it's often metal powder like aluminum or magnesium which produces very bright light when oxidized. Now the second thing that you need is an oxidizer. This provides the oxygen needed for combustion. Common oxidizers include nitrates, perchlorates or chlorates of potassium, strontium or barium. These break down under heat, releasing oxygen to feed the fire. Now the third thing that you would need is colorants. Metal salts produce different colors when burned. Strontium produces red, barium gives green, copper makes blue, sodium creates yellow, and calcium gives orange. Fireworks designer carefully mix these to achieve different effects. Now the last thing that you need is a binder or an additive. A binder like dextrin, a starch-based glue, holds the composition together. Other additives adjust the burn rate or stability. For example, boric acid is sometimes added to reduce unwanted reactions when aluminum is present. Now when ignited, the oxidizer and the fuel react in an exothermic reaction, one that releases heat. This heat excites the atoms of a colorant metal, causing them to emit light on a specific wavelength, which is why we see different colors. In sparkles, burning metal particles glow due to black body radiation, meaning they radiate light due to their high temperature. Now here we got some fireworks, so let's open them up and see what's on the inside. 
Now this is just some small firecrackers for children that are safe to handle. Still, I would not suggest to just open up all the fireworks that you find and then lit them on fire again. Now, on the inside you can see that there is some glue that is also used as fuel. On top of that you can see like these little small balls of metal powder that create the sparks. Now I also got one that is still intact, so let's see if the result is what we expected. The vision is a little bit blurry because we shot it on the dark, but you can still see the effects. Now the physics of the fireworks involve heat, pressure, motion and sound. When fireworks explode, it rapidly expands gas outward in all directions, propelling burning particles and creating different patterns in the sky. Now one of the effects is an explosion and shock waves. The combustion of fireworks burst charge generates a rapid increase in pressure, creating a shock wave. This is what causes the loud boom of a firework. Now the placement of the stars, small pellets of composition, inside fireworks shells determine the shape of the explosion. A circular arrangement results in a round burst while special layouts create rings, smiley faces and cascading willow effects. Now sparks are tiny molten metal particles flung outwards by the explosion. Their curved paths are due to gravity pulling them down while they continue burning. Now fireworks and sparklers are carefully manufactured to ensure safety and effectiveness. Now sparklers are basically a metal wire that is dipped into a composition of fuel oxidizer and metal powders. Then they are dried in layers. Each coat builds up a pyrotechnic material. Now aerial shells, these are carefully assembled with lift charge, bursting charge and star pellets arranged for specific effects. Factories take strict precautions including using non-sparking tools and separate storage areas for different materials. Now while fireworks are beautiful, they are also very explosive and they must be handled with care. Use fireworks outdoors, away from buildings and flammable materials. Wear safety glasses when lighting fireworks. Keep water or a fire extinguisher nearby. Dispose of your fireworks in water to prevent accidental ignition. Now sparklers burn above a thousand degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt some metals. Always supervise children while using them. Now governments regulate fireworks to ensure safety. Many countries limit the size and the type of consumer fireworks available, while professional displays require permits and trained technicians. So here are some fun facts. Blue fireworks are the hardest to make because copper compounds break down at high temperatures. Now the world's largest firework shell launched in Japan weighed over 1200 kilograms or 2600 LBS. Now one of the things they're currently developing is silent fireworks. Now the reason for this is basically for noise sensitive areas and wildlife conservation. So let's end this with some experimenting. So to prove all we have learned today, let's throw some iron powder into a Bunsen burner to see what happens. As you can see, it provides the sparks as expected. They indeed fly all over the place. Beautiful, isn't it? Now as a final experiment, I got a piece of wood here and on this piece of wood, I put some of the metal powder, the iron filings. I'm going to hold this into the flame and you can see the sparks are flying around vigorously. So that is what makes sparklers spark. So next time when you see fireworks, think about the cool chemical processes that happen on the inside. Now if you like this episode and want to see more, make sure to subscribe so you won't be missing an episode. And if you like this video and you enjoyed it and you think I missed something, make sure to leave it in the comments.